Jazz has kind of been my foundation and passport into all kinds of things. When I was a little, little, little girl Just trying to find my way I grew up right here in Denver, Colorado in Park Hill. My mother was a nurse, my father worked for the, uh, the Postal Department. And um, they were both lovers of music. Plus, there was a lot of music in the family. Our, our family lifestyle was socializing. There was always music. There was always someone dancing or playing an instrument at my grandmother's home 24-7. She has the, uh, comes from uh, really good stock, so to speak. I mean, she, this, this, this runs in the family. My uncle is Charles Burrell, who's a great jazz bassist as well as classical bassist. And then I had a great aunt who played the piano and sang the most wicked blues anybody could ever hope to hear, you know. And she would teach me these songs. And it was funny, I'd stand up and I'd be singing these songs. That's what she would do. She would listen and then sing it her way. We would look at him and say, well, what did you just sing? My song, is their response. My song, that's my song. You know, she's pretty feisty up there, I bet. Uh, it was like, it wasn't until I was in my 20s and one time I was singing one of those songs and I thought, oh, that's what I was singing about. <laughs> I can wake up and sing. la da 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 There was a club in, um, uh, over off of Leedsdale called The Warehouse. And it was a, this club was so cool because upstairs were all the big acts and downstairs was a place called The Tool Shed. And I was still in high school, but on Sunday they'd have a jam session. So I would go to the jam session and it just so happened jazz master uh, Gene Harris was, he had decided to stay in Denver. And they liked what I was doing and they said, uh, would you like a gig here? I said, do you know how old I am? So they talked to my mother, and I would be downstairs in the tool shed. The big acts would be upstairs. So it would be like Tina Turner, Mongo Santa Maria. One time Ella Fitzgerald uh, was there, and uh, she got sick from the altitude. And they said, you're on upstairs. And I thought, oh, my God, you know. And she had, been, she had come down and hung out in the tool shed between shows. So I went upstairs, and I went in her dressing room, and I just sat there and I saw these blue patent leather shoes and she had very narrow feet. And um, so I put them on and I went on stage and I did about four songs, scared half to death, you know, but wearing her shoes. I think it's the passion for music that she has and, and how she chooses to express it in that particular moment is what, it, it speaks to what we call the, the epitome of jazz that every performance, every song is uniquely different. One of the things that I love about jazz music is, is living music. So it changes from night to night and it becomes something really, really special. And I am very fortunate to have a band of impeccable musicians that, you know, every night is this in intense um, uh, conversation that goes on that we invite the audience to take part of, and when they do, that's when the magic happens. So she's like a, a, a part of that continuum of great vocalists that pay the price uh, that's required to plume the depths of their soul and also have the technical, the virtuosity, and, and, the, and, and the nuanced understanding of what the, what the music affords. I think Diane's impact uh, as a musician, as a vocalist, uh, you know, globally, first of all, is, is, is well established. The greatest performance we had in here one night was when she sang Misty with our orchestra. Man, we were all just, we all just looked around like, damn, did we just hear that? Uh, she can sing by herself or she can sing with one musician. She can sing with a quartet or she can sing with a choir or a big band. It doesn't matter. It's Diane Reeves. One time we played in a, we, we were in Denver. She came up on the stage and sat in the trumpet section. That was unbelievably just a great feeling for us. And then one time she hosted the whole band and cooked for all of us. Man, you should have tasted the food. <laughs> well, all that mercy. I don't know if I, she might cook better than she sang. And I like to have, get together with people, cook a dinner, and then sit around the table and talk all night about all kinds of things. Whatever, it doesn't matter. 
she's performed popes, kings, queens, has received numerous awards, five Grammys. I think she has three honorary doctorates now. She's got three um, Diane Reeves days <laughs> from each of the mayors that we've had. I love all of the things that happen out there, but um, going back to being here in Denver, you know, I just love the simplicity of, of things. That's what uh, makes me feel comfortable. That's what makes me feel the greatest amount of joy. We're, we have it so good here in Denver because when Diane sings here at home and she tries to do it at least once a year, um, her family, she's got a great family, they show up. And when her family's in the house, we're all family. Well, she's been representing the state of Colorado all over the world with the type of style that you can't hope to have another person. She's an ambassador. As a matter of fact, just knowing that she was from Colorado made me like the state more. And I like all the states. Man, I go to Colorado. I love Colorado now. Denver, El Chapultepec, Diane. You know what I'm saying? Keep your